not exactly the best start folks it is hammering down outside and we're meant to be getting on a barge to go to Fraser oh look at the size of that ladies and gents that's an elbow slapper old school Alvy yes very old school about a seven year old reel target species woohoo g'day my name is Luke and this is my wife, Jen. And here are our two growing boys, Liam and Elliot. We've been fishing, boating, and exploring the pristine waters of the Fraser Coast for about 10 years now. So subscribe and come join the adventure. G'day folks, Luke Fitzpatrick here. Thank you for watching another fishing, boating, exploring video. We've just returned from an amazing week beach fishing along the eastern side of Gari, Fraser Island. We captured so much awesome content that I've broken it into two episodes. This episode, episode 132, takes in the first half of the trip and episode 133 takes in the second half. I hope you really enjoy both episodes and if you've not done so already, please hit that subscribe button and remember to stay safe on the water. Oh, Shane's on. Shane's on to a good one. Oh. Oh, I dropped him. Shane's onto a good one. I've just dropped a good one. Get my line in quick. Look at that rod, Ben. Another one. Nice work. Beautiful. Hey? It's getting exhausted. <laughs> it's a tough life, isn't it? Yeah. On the old school Alvi. Yes. Very old school. About a 70 year old reel. <laughs> One of the things we want to highlight throughout both episodes is the fishing pattern we settled upon after a week of trial and error. Throughout both episodes, we will show you exactly how we approached fishing each gutter at different stages of the tide, in the hope that you'll be able to apply your own version of this fishing pattern for your next epic adventure to Gary Fraser Island. This episode is bait fishing focused, and in episode 133, we switched to using lures and jigs to show you how effective beach jigging can be. Oh, shades on again! He's got the knack at the moment. He's obviously landing them right in the right spot. He's showing me how it's done today. <laughs> the old fella's got it. Another one. Beautiful fish. Oh, Charles Alvey would be proud. Oh! You this one, did you? No, I've got him. He's on. He's not very big. Oh, he's come off. <laughs> I think it was a little whiting. Trying to film and trying to fish at the same time. Oh, no, he's still there. Oh, no, he's off. How many you got? Four. Maybe one or two more and then we'll be done. A couple more and we're done. I'll just quickly show you the rig setup that we've been using today. Um, I've been using mostly the eight to 15 pound uh, nine foot uh, rod, uh, matched up with a 2500 Stratic CI4. Um, really lightweight, really good rod to cast. And this is what's at the business end. We've got a size 4 worm hook, little red bead, up to a little bit of tubing, and then a running sinker. And then I've got about oh, 
for about 60 centimetres of leader before a double uni knot connects it to uh, the braid. Meaning that running ball sinker can run a fair way. Um, yeah, we started off the day using uh, beach worms and they were working, but we we're just getting a lot of picky little fish. And then once we switched to the pippies, uh, we've just noticed that we've started to get um, larger fish, which has been good. Morning everybody, day two on Fraser Island. Yes, it is chilly. We have the beanies on. It's a little bit cold. Uh, one thing we noticed yesterday was pippies were really successful for fishing. So first job this morning is to find fresh bait and pippies. Shane's into it. He's got his little He's got his little bag. I'll show you what to look for when you're looking for pippies. These are the lumps. So these are the lumps you'll find. You'll find them in patches all the way up and down the island. Generally uh, up from where the sand is a bit wetter up into the drier sand where the vehicle tracks are. And let's see if there's one in this one. There it is. Prime bait for us. So we just need to collect a few of these, check your bag limits and all that sort of stuff in your own state, all that sort of stuff. Um, but these are proving to be excellent bait. For the first two days, we very much concentrated on fishing the front gutter, moving along the red lines near position one, casting baits into the red circle. We caught fish all through this area. At each gutter, we were conscious of where the purple entry and exit point was and found the prime spot for larger fish to be where the foam formed, just on the inside of the entrance, generally on the side of the middle sandbank. So you can see where that those waves are just cresting over there. They're just they're just coming off that little drop of sand into this channel and that's where we're targeting. And Shane got his fish up there with that white water sort of swirling a little bit. So put mine out here it'll naturally walk this way hopefully into the zone. Perfect. So that rolling ball sinker is just slowly tumbling along and I'm just taking a couple of steps each time just to keep my line in front of me and a little bit of tension there so I can feel what it's doing. And I'll just basically move my way down the line, go back, try it again, do it a couple of times and if we have no luck then that's when we move to the next gutter. Most on cue folks, the minute I got to that area where Shane had caught his, we're on. It's quite an aggressive bite too. This fish isn't that big, but uh, it's a fish. And it's nice to uh, score a fish first thing in the morning, a little dart. One of the other good things about the uh, hippies is what you don't use out of the shell forms a bit of uh, burly at your feet. So you put the shell back in the water and you're just creating a bit of natural burly. I think we're coming up close to the bottom of the tide now because the sinker is not moving as fast. Water seems to be slowing down a little bit. A little bit better. The sun's actually pulling drag folks. I haven't seen him yet. He's using the tide against me. Oh, Taiwan. Beautiful fish. If I put him back, I reckon he's just under. Better. 
fresh, fresh bait right where you're fishing. It's good, eh? Rightio, so tide's bottomed out. We're just uh, topping up on pippies before we uh, move on to another gutter. How good is it that you can fish, catch a fish, come back up here, recuperate or restock your uh, bait supply, and then just move on to the next one. It's, uh, it's all very, very simple uh, stuff. It's really, really easy and uh, lots of fun. Very relaxing. Shane's down on his hands and knees. I'm not sure if I'll get him back up. This could end in tragedy. Come to say good day. We're trying to work out whether we should fish this gutter, mate. Fisherman's friend. But that's the reason why you want to keep your car closed up, folks. Keep your rubbish bagged, all that sort of stuff. Because they're scavengers, basically. And uh, he was just hanging around. He wasn't moving on. He was sniffing the tyres, wanting to see if he can get in the door. And now he's going to see if Shane's going to throw that empty pippy on the ground. He's after a bit of a feed. So, got to be really careful. They're not tame. You don't know how they're going to act. So, uh... Just do everything the authorities tell you to do, and you should be right. Hey folks, morning. We've already collected our pippies. Uh, Shane had a lot of success yesterday catching tarwine with his faithful Alvi reel. Look how old this thing is. Probably about 70 odd years plus. 70 years, all right. So today, uh, one of the rods we brought over is the... Can I grab uh, that box? Is the uh, cruiser rod uh four piece so shane's going to mount the alvey on that today and give that a crack to see how it goes and we're going to show you whether shane can figure out how to put it together yeah good question the big one first <laughs> got to find which half goes to which half yeah yeah and it's got two two top sections it's got a medium and a fast action section Everybody's coming over the island, the weather's beautiful. So out of those two, one will have medium written on it and one will have fast written on it. That's fast, medium. Oh yeah, so what are you going with? The medium. Medium, I'll get the medium tip out. That's the fast one. That's the medium tip. Right. I'll put these back in here. We'll get the alvey on it, we'll get the... Uh... And the reason for the alvey reel, for the reel of choice, is the fact that this rod has got a large stripping runner. Yeah, yeah. For the loops that come off the alvey reel. Nice. All right, do you want to whack that on it? We'll, uh, we'll rig it up as we've been stock standard rigged for the last couple of days. The hardest part for us though, wearing prescription glasses, is actually threading the line through the eyes and the, the eyes of the hooks. Okay, so we got a size 4 Gamagatsu worm hook, uh, little running ball sinker, and a little bit of red tubing, and I'm running the exact same on the other rod. Uh, that's basically how we have it set up in the end. So that running ball sinker, that, that means it can move up and down the line freely, and when it's in the surf, it basically lets the bait sort of float away from it a little bit and the, the ball sinker just allows it to tumble around in the surf quite easily. And we found that you want to keep your bait moving a little bit. And one of the advantages of the Alvi shame that you found yesterday was keeping that tension that, on there. That tension very slow wind to keep the tension on it and you can feel exactly what's happening all the time then. Because a lot of the time the fish are coming up and they're sort of they're, they're tap, tapping on there and you can feel it through the rod and the line and if you strike too hard too early you're basically just ripping that bait away from in front of their face but the alvey allows you to just keep that tension on the line and that feel on the line all the way and then all of a sudden they'll start to load up and that's when you can really set that hook and bring them in it's really a dark background so I can see what I'm doing <laughs> well, Shane's going to show us rigging up the pippy for us 
handy to have pliers. You can use the inside of the Alvi to do that as well. And you use the back plate, the bolt on the Alvi reel to do it as well, but I thought it'd be more civilised doing it this way. This time. <laughs> more civilised? Okay, you throw the shell away, you take the meat out. Hook, ah, not through the finger. Those Gamagatsu hooks are very sharp. Yeah, yeah. All right, through the lip of the pippy. Just weave it through. Bring the hook at, at the body. There it is. Done. Ready to go. Now, one thing I was doing yesterday is I was getting a little square of squid and just putting it at the, the base of the hook just to help the fish, uh, stop the fish from sucking it off so easily. Anyway, now you've got to catch a fish on it. Easy. We'll right. show you the gutter we're about to fish and we'll get cracking. I christened a new rod yesterday, no reason why I can't do it again today. Spirit. I think Shane's on already. You're on already. That didn't take long. What do you got? Whiting, I think. A little whiting? So he's using the wave to bring it up. Oh, there it is. Oh, look at the size of that. The rod is christened. The rod is well and truly christened. Oh, my Lord. Holy dooly. <laughs> oh, look at the size of that, ladies and gents. That's an elbow slapper. Righty oh, on the travel rod, the cruiser. How'd it feel? Good. Feel good? I'd like to know what the soft tip was like. Yeah, yeah, well, we might put the soft tip on now. No, 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 we've got a few of these first. A few of these first. Look at the size of that, folks. We'll get the shadow out. That's an absolute monster. Lunch time. We're going to uh, cook up Shane's whiting that he caught this morning. Uh, we're just going to have some whiting fillets in bread rolls for lunch. Got the trusty All for Adventure cooker. I've noticed a few people using these now. They are really good. Gonna be nothing complicated in this recipe, folks. It's gonna be uh, straight on the hot pan, cook them up, straight between two pieces of bread. Gas bottles out of cook box. Really simple lunch today. Uh, I've just dipped the fish back in the ocean a bit. Should be really, really nice. Uh, a little bit of oil on it just to it won't take long to cook these. Oh, sizzle, sizzle. Bit of salt and pepper, Shane? Yes, please. You want the lime? Did you bring lime, did you? Yep. I'm on a bit of a slope here. I'm battling gravity as I do this. Where's your lime? Yeah. And a bit. Of, you want that squirted on, eh? Yeah. Why not? Why not? He says. Why not, indeed? Bread rolls and butter. Where did we put the bread rolls? I don't know. You put them in. Um, a little bit of lime on this now. Yeah. Please. You sure? Yeah. Which one? Hang on. Hang on. I've got to show you the camera like all the good cooks do. I've got to make sure we're... White, fresh whiting rolls. Care of Shane's fishing this morning. How long was it? 36, 36 and a half? 37. It's 36 and a half, but he's going 37. He can do that with a fish that big. I could do it, I caught it. Yeah, yeah. Rightio, help yourself, mate. Yeah. You on again? What have you got? Dart. Dart? Oh yeah. Bring him up so I can have a look. On the old pippy. Just put him up, get him under control so I can get a close look. Oh. He's got me hooked. He's got your hook. 
<laughs> he broke you off. Yeah. You lost your, uh, oh, there's your sinker and everything just there. Quick look. Look at the camera. You gotta hold him properly. I don't wanna get your seat on the camera. Go get it. Go get your sinker. I'll get it. Sinker. Righto folks, that is the end of this episode. Thank you once again for watching. In our next episode, we switch to lures and discover how effective beach jigging can be. We really hope you can join us and all the best.